Ladies and gentlemen, in a time of worldwide crisis, just when the world needs it most, a hero will come forward. A man who has the power to change the world for the better. A man who knows the answers to the questions we didn't even know we needed to ask. It's obviously not good to eat other people's poop. Well, that time of need is now, and the man who will lead us all out of this crisis is definitely not Dr. Thomas Cowan. Just listen to his words of wisdom. In my opinion, the heart does not pump the blood. As a doctor with an IQ like no others, but maybe not in a good way, he is there to answer all your questions. A lot of patients over the years have come to me and said they want help with their immune system. And the first thing I usually say to them is, you don't have an immune system. Well, that's not very helpful, is it? Anyway, welcome back to Conspiracy Cats, and this week we're going to be looking at one of the worst spreaders of misinformation on YouTube, and we're also going to be looking at his claims, his credibility, and some of the support he receives from the comments of his own subscribers. But for now, let me introduce you to Dr. Thomas Cowan, a man who, it seems, isn't troubled by the random order in which words seem to fall out of his mouth. If you're paralyzed, the blood stays in your leg and it'll never get out of there and eventually it'll get more and more and then you'll pop, fly around the room backwards because your legs are 20 feet wide, right? Mm -hmm. See? But it does seem, judging by my travels on Twitter lately, that some people are not only just believing his nonsense, but are actively out there trying to promote it. And it seems that he's also written what he's calling a book on the subject of viruses. Now this May or may not be a screenshot of one of the pages, but either way, it seems to have taken Twitter by storm to the extent that people are happy to give this book free reviews. And you know what? I couldn't help myself either. So here's mine. It's shit. So why is Dr. Thomas Cowan on my radar? Well, as you may or may not have noticed, the title of his book is Viruses Do Not Cause Disease, which of course is one of the most stupid things I have ever heard since I last went to the Blackpool Flat Earth Conference. If you were travelling from Scotland down to, uh, to London on a ball, it would be downhill all the way. You wouldn't need to put any petrol in your car. You'd just use your brakes. And I hear you ask, why does he think viruses can't cause disease? Well, in his opinion, they have not fulfilled something called... Cox's postulates. Which is, by the way, the correct way of pronouncing it, but I prefer... Cox's postulates. And I prefer that, obviously, because... Well, you know... Cox's Sorry, and yes, I am totally aware that I do need to grow up a little bit. Sorry. Now, Thomas Cowan and Dr. Andrew Kaufman that you've just seen there are both of the opinion that viruses cannot fulfill Cox postulates, which, again, in their opinion, means they can never be the cause of a disease. And they do have some pretty public backing on this. This is Kate Shemarani, a high-profile, outspoken fan of both Cowan and Kaufman. And in this tweet, she's backing up the ridiculous notion that you cannot catch a virus. But why stick to one conspiracy theory when you can have them all, even if they contradict each other, like she does in this tweet? Which, if you click on the link, will take you to this page here, which will tell you that COVID-19 is indeed caused by a contagious virus, which was created in a lab. Now, if you happen to be a viewer of my second channel, Baldy Cats, you will be aware that I've dealt with this issue before in this video. Now, I have linked that video in the description, so if you want to go over there and see how I deal with the Cox postulates argument, then please feel free. But for now, I'm going to ignore that and I'm going to ask a different question. You see, if Dr. Thomas Cowan feels that viruses are not the reason people are getting ill, then he must have an alternative reason for why people are getting ill. So it's time, ladies and gentlemen, to learn some science with Dr. Thomas Cowan. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to carry on our series of Learn Science with Dr. Thomas Cowan. In previous episodes, he's taught us all about a healthy diet. It's obviously not good to eat other people's poop. He told us where that poop might have come from. Maybe the fairies dropped it there and they did it very carefully. He's blown our mind with his maths. The difference between 5 and 2 or 3 percent is nothing. And today is going to make up some absolutely spectacular nonsense about why people get ill. Indeed. Now, the science we are going to learn today is a little bit depressing. So in order to get myself in the mood for it, I need cheering up. So, Mark, can you please tell me in all your experience, what is the funniest herb out there? Sage. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, buddy. You know, that really helped. Now, as I was investigating why Thomas Cowan thinks people get ill, 
I happened across his website and particularly the shop on his website where he happens to sell things. And I found a big clue there to what his argument might be, particularly in the form of an advert you're about to see. Now, the advert I'm about to show you has obviously been changed by me a little bit, but I promise you that the product in question and the price of the product in question remain entirely unchanged. Enjoy. Hey you there! Yes, I'm talking to you, you filthy skank. How much money have you got? I bet it's not much. Hmm, $575, eh? Well, why don't you spend every penny of that on this shower head? Yes. No, I said yes. Well, that's a good little dirty skank. You see, our $575 shower head is based on the work of an Austrian forester. Yes, and he's been dead a very long time. He definitely did not endorse this product. So if you want to spend $575 on a shower head that we claim imbues the water with the energy that creates life, then we'll take your money. Hell, if it helps you buy our $575 shower head, I'll even throw in the claim that it will help improve the health and vitality of your animals and plants. Who gives a shit? Now give me your money. Yeah, a $575 shower head that somehow gives water magical properties. And here is the man himself talking about it. A shower device, which makes this implosion with crystals, and it comes out in these uh, vortexes. And then you put, you can put like a plastic cap, like a yogurt container, right underneath the water coming out of the shower head. So if you can imagine a heavy stream of water coming out for your shower head, and you put a very light yogurt cap on there, Obviously, the water's coming down, it will push the yogurt cap down just like you would expect. But what you see in the video is that the yogurt cap actually sucks up and is suspended under, underneath the shower head. And when you look at that, you say, I don't know what you say, you can't believe it, but there it is, it's true. That is creating a suction. And the theory is if you expose yourself to that suction, that energized vortex water, that will confer health advantages to you. Now, I am definitely not saying that a shower head is incapable of producing a suction effect on an object placed underneath it. In fact, I think it is. But what I'm saying is, it is absolutely nothing to do with magic energized water. And another thing I'm going to say is, I wonder if Dr. Thomas Cowan will ever see sense and produce an infomercial that looks a little bit like this. Hi, my name's Dr. Thomas Cowan, and I instantly regretted spending $575 on a shower head and talking rubbish about some energized vortex when I saw this video. Yes, silly old gullible me, eh? It turns out I can get exactly the same effect just by stealing this $1 tap from my neighbor's shed. Yeah, of course we are talking about the Bernoulli principle. Now, the Bernoulli principle is where a fast-moving fluid on one side of an object reduces the pressure on that side, causing what appears to us as a suction effect. But never mind any of that, because now we're going to get to the main explanation. Here, Dr. Thomas Cowan is going to tell us why this magic water, or structured water, as he calls it, why it's important for our health. Now, he does make an awful lot of claims, and this next clip is about the most concise explanation I could find of him giving that claim. And since structured water is the basic unit of biology, or the functional unit, in my opinion. It's what causes blood to flow. It's what causes cells to be toxic or not. It's the foundation of cancer. It's where the it's how the mitochondrial uh, production becomes function. So let's be clear, without enough structured water in your body, he's claiming that the blood cannot flow, your cells will become toxic and you'll become sick, and also you will get cancer. And I want to be really, really clear on that point. In his opinion, structured water or the lack of structured water in your cells is the cause of cancer. In his opinion, DNA, cells, oncogenes have nothing to do with it. Cancer is, is not a problem of oncogenes. It isn't even a problem of the DNA, and even it isn't even a problem of the nucleus. So at this point, I've got to wonder, can drinking structured water actually help you? And there are some amazing cases, like people go to this place in France called Lourdes. There's been 7,000 documented cures uh, and something like 700 miracles by the Catholic Church rigorously investigated um, that people drink highly energized structured water 
and pray, I guess. Yeah, so that's a sort of energy too, and it helps them. Well, in that case, isn't it a relief to know that on his website, you can pick up these bottles of water for anything up to $45. What an absolute bargain. It sounds amazing stuff. Now, Daniel, I'm wondering what else this structured water can cure. So, for example, if I had constipation, what could I do with this water to help me out? Pour a little water in the bottom. Well, thank you very much, Daniel. That's sound advice. Now, at this point, I'm imagining a lot of you at home are asking the question, what actually is structured water? So to answer that for you, I've brought along American actress Melissa McCarthy, who's joined by someone who I can only describe as being literally the happiest man on the planet. So we've done a little bit of research and we just wanted to share uh, some, some technical definitions and just bring you into the amazing world of structured water. Structured water is a molecular arrangement of water molecules that exists when water is near hydrophilic, water-loving surfaces. Mm -hmm. Much like ice, water molecules join together in hexagonally structured single layer sheets. But unlike ice, however, the sheets are flexible and move independently as they are not glued together by protons. The majority of the water in your body is structured water as your bodily tissues are hydrophilic. Now, if you're confused by what she has just obviously read from a piece of paper, don't worry about it. So was she. As your bodily tissues are hydrophilic. Yep. So, what does that mean? So now it's a happy guy's turn to speak. And he takes some words and he puts them in an order that may or may not have anything to do with the question that's just been asked to him. But nobody cares because, after all, he's just happy to be there. What does that mean? Okay, so uh, structured water is water that is in a more energetic form. Right, so... It's energized water. It is energized water. It yes. has it has more like energy, life life force energy in it when it's structured a certain way. Now, clearly these two people know as much about chemistry as this flat earther does about telling the time. Well, time is just like centimeters and inches. I know. So here is the truth about structured water. Are you ready? Structured water It doesn't exist. Oh, no. I know, Arwen, it must be very disappointing for you, but trust me, nobody, and I mean nobody, was more disappointed to find out that structured water doesn't exist than this guy. And I think I've captured the moment that his heart actually broke when the news was delivered. Oh dear. Anyway, it is time to talk a little bit of science. And as with a lot of conspiracy theories, this hexagonal structured water conspiracy theory does have its roots in just a little bit of truth. You see, as this paper here describes, when water comes into contact with a hydrophilic surface, the molecules at that surface can form hexagonal domains. However, these domains are highly unstable and they do not ever spread through the rest of the body of the water. Now, because water molecules are free to move, they are constantly making new patterns and arrangements that last for only trillionths of a second. What they certainly never do is hold the same structure for 45 days or more, like some websites who sell structured water claim. Now, just to be very clear, it is actually possible to take water and via um, an incredibly complex process, make it so all the molecules in that water are fixed in position and it's not moving around freely. It's a very, very complicated process. And when we've managed to achieve it, the product we are left with is called ice. Now, it does seem that the people who believe in structured water can also be split into two camps. There are the people that believe structured water is this hexagonal water that's a, a fixed pattern. But there are also people that think structured water has a different explanation. Some websites that sell structured water to drink actually claim that structured water has a chemical formula H3O2. Now, of course, if it did have that chemical formula, it wouldn't be water, which is H2O. So don't drink it. It would, in fact, be a hydroxide hydrate ion, which can form when an OH- hydroxide ion temporarily bonds with a water molecule. But these, again, are incredibly unstable and cannot hold that structure inside an aqueous solution. And in fact, in order for these ions to be stable, they are usually bonded with a positive metal ion as a solid. Now, there are two ways you can learn more about structured water. Firstly, you could spend $45 for a bottle of water from Dr. Cowan's website, and you could spend some money on his book. 
Or you could follow the link in the description and you could go to Agree to Disagree this Wednesday night where we will be joined by a special guest, a chemistry expert who's going to tell us all about it. Here's a little clue to who he might be. He knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. Yes, fast closing in on 1 million subscribers. It is the legend himself, Professor Dave Explains. He'll be our guest on Wednesday night. I have linked it in the description, so please feel free to go and watch it. But for now, Chatbox Travels. Chat. Box. Travels. Space comma. Welcome back to Chatbox Travels and in this segment we're going to be looking at some of the comments left by supporters of Dr. Thomas Cowan underneath one of his videos. And I don't think you'll be surprised to hear that this comment is actually one of the more sensible. Eat more water. Yeah, so, you know, he said that. And this guy said this. Hello, I've just bobbed by to say I agree, the heart does not pump the blood and it's definitely not crazy to say that. Well, it is a little bit crazy to say that, but not compared to what I'm about to say. You ready? You see, the real truth is, it's the gut. Yeah, I just said it. The gut is the circulatory flywheel. That's what's doing all the pushing. Now, I'm going to be very straight with you. If you genuinely think what's pushed around by your gut is blood, then I highly recommend you never go into your local blood bank and try to make a donation. Otherwise, you could get yourself in a lot of bother. Now, the comments we're looking at today are taken from a, a YouTube channel that mirrored a Thomas Cowan video. And the owner of that channel seems to be getting a lot of questions, as you might expect. But none as confusing as this one. Hello, I just bobbed by to put these words in this order. Are you ready? But why? This massage goes to old people. And you know that isn't even some sort of code. The channel owner is equally as confused as we are. Moving on to our next words of wisdom, which also come from somebody who is equally determined not to talk about any actual science whatsoever. Boo yakasha. I'm here to drop some truth bombs on you. Are you ready? Because one of the things I've been learning is Truth has a frequency. How about that for a soundbite? Anyway, the more truth we allow to receive, the better our spiddy sensors will develop. And we all want that. And unfortunately, it seems that the spiddy sensors of our next poster haven't alerted him to the fact that he started to believe in some complete and utter nonsense, despite other people being willing to help him out and do his research for him. Oh, hello. It's an absolute pleasure to meet you. I just want you to know that I completely agree with Dr. Thomas Cowan. You see, I tried sharing some of his information a while back on my Facebook business page. And you know what? Surprisingly, it was immediately discredited by the fact checkers. So what did I learn from that? Absolutely nothing. Obviously, they're just trying to silence him like the rest of us. And it is amazing and frustrating in equal amounts when people go out of their way to help these conspiracy theories, only to be told that they are actually part of the problem and part of the conspiracy. Um, anyway, competition time. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to crown the internet's most generic, stereotypical, science-denying conspiracy theorist of the week. Now, we all know that science-denying conspiracy theories all have the same generic, stereotypical responses and behaviours in certain situations, almost to the point where we can predict exactly what they're going to say when responding to a certain comment or in a given situation. So our next three posters are going to be gunning for the title of the most stereotypical science-denying conspiracy theorist. Let's see how our poster number one gets on. Hello, my name's a cat. Oh, it doesn't matter what my name is, because I could literally be any flat earther or any virus denier. See, this is the process we all go through. I searched for Cox postulates and this popped up, but when I clicked on it, it was an actual scientific article. Well, that's too difficult for me. I'd rather just watch someone spouting nonsense on YouTube. That's way more easy. Now, that was good, but is he the most stereotypical science denying conspiracy theorist on YouTube? No, I am the most stereotypical conspiracy theorist on the internet. Look, one doctor told me after expressing this stuff that the Cox postulates are outdated and not reliable. How many I argue the toss with him and be right? Yeah, check that out. Because my intuition tells me I am. Excellent. Another good entry. So somebody is informed by a professional that Cox postulates were indeed created before viruses were even discovered um, and therefore are outdated if you use them in their strictest form. But the person hearing that very sensible, very checkable fact isn't interested and has already made their own conclusion. But will that be the winning entry? Well, if it's going to be, it's going to have to beat off extremely stiff, 
competition from this next comment, which ironically is actually the reply to the comment we've just seen. No, I'm here to tell you that I am the most stereotypical conspiracy theorist on the internet because my answer to that question is prove it. Even though I could check the dates that the Cox postulates were published myself and I could check the dates that viruses were discovered myself, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to get off my chair and I'm not going to stop watching YouTube and I'm not even going to attempt to provide an articulate argument. I'm going to sit here like I'm a king and I expect all of you to come to me and prove to me what I could look up for myself if I wasn't such a lazy shit. Exactly. And how many times have we seen replies like that? How many times have we seen these science denying conspiracy theories be presented with proper measurements, proper calculations, proper evidence, only to respond to that without even trying to understand what's going on, but by delivering some tripey soundbite like this? Right. So how do you prove it? So you know that those, 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 you know that they're there. But no, what I'm saying is how do you prove that those the results of those of, of that of that machinery equipment, how do you prove that it's correct? Amazing argument. Now you can vote for your winner in the comment section, but for now I am off and I'll see you soon.